Hello and welcome to Honey Badger 3D Print and Paint. So today we are going to be reviewing the Longer LK4 Pro. Um, quick side note before we move on to the credits. Uh, Longer provided us this machine for free for review purposes. Um, however, all of the comments and the review is our own opinion. No money changed hands. So, um, so this is this is still our opinion. Our as unbiased as I think we can be, opinion on, uh, on the machine itself. So let's get started, roll those credits. Okay, so before we start, um, let's address the obvious. Yes, it is essentially another Ender 3 clone. Um, However, longer are doing things a little differently. And personally, I've, I've had better prints out of this than I ever had with my Ender 3 Pro. And that had a ridiculous number of modifications and ducts and upgrades and different boards and all sorts of things in it. Um, and I'd actually challenge that this is slightly better than the new Ender 3 V2 that has come out as well. So let's start with the, uh, with, with, with the stats. So it's a 220 by 220 by 250 build plate. Um, it can actually print a little bit outside of those, I know, because this is 252 mil high um, and it printed that just fine. Um, the hot end is, for all intents and purposes, exactly the same as an Ender 3, except they've gone for a bit of a different cooling duct on one side. Um, it's worthwhile noting that that is still single direction cooling, so it only cools from the right. It's not a, a, a sort of like the same as doing, say, a um, like a bullseye or a fang duct or a pet's fang or something like that. Um, so good. Maybe could be a little better, but frankly, the print quality I'm getting, absolutely brilliant. Um, the build surface is glass, but it has a PC sheet on it. Um, if anything, I have found this sticks too well. So the problem I'm having is um, I'm having to print with a raft because I'm actually, ha even once the build plate has cooled down, I'm actually having to hit the raft with the spatula that's included um because it, it's so welded to the build surface i haven't put anything on this i've done no hairspray um those who watch the channel know that i don't use any of the glues or painter's tape or anything like that it's just the regular build surface i'm using pla filament and super adhesive super adhesive um, I put a little picture up in the corner of what you get in the box. So you get your spool holder, you get a little bundle of um, Allen keys, you get a little wrench, you get a little USB key with your SD card, you get your mandatory spatula, and you get four bulldog clips as well. The bed, as I said before, is glass, but it is removable. Um, obviously you can't bend it, which isn't great, but it does mean that if you wanted to fit, say, a wham-bam sheet or something like that, Absolutely, you can do that. Um, the bed says that it's a fast heating DC plate. Now, it's not a silicone plate, for sure, um, but it, it, it heats up quick enough. Um, 2208 drivers in there, so nice and quiet, although um, I think they're running in standalone mode, um, not, uh, so you're not gonna be enabling stealth chop and senseless homing and things like that. Um, they have got an all metal extruder head on the back. That is pretty standard now. It's got a filament runout sensor. That filament runout sensor is optical, not physical. So um, most filament sensors are just basically an end stop switch um, that they put through a tube. And as the, when the filament triggers the switch, it's empty. This is actually optical, similar to the one that's on a Prusa. Um, and they actually give you a spare as well. So I don't know if the assumption is that it's gonna break or that it's gonna wear out at some point. Obviously I've not done anywhere near enough hours for it to do so, so it's working fine. Um, it comes pretty much assembled. So you um, put your gantry on, you put the X gantry on, 
and that's it. The, uh, the, you, you put your bars in, that's pretty much it. Everything's nice and tucked away, so there's a separate box to the AC supply. This is something that I really like to see in 3D printers. It shows a degree of thought around, um, around how you lay out the electronics. It's not just, oh, and then we've, we've, we've forgotten we need to stuff the electronics in something. Um, I think you should always do whatever you can to keep the power separate from the board. So AC on this side or AC DC on this side and then your board and electronics on this side. Um, it's something that's also present in the artillery sidewinder as well. So the artillery sidewinder has a cross beam across the middle. The top section is the power supply and solid state relay for the bed and then the bottom section is the screen and the, uh, and, and the electronics. They're materially separate. So if you need to work on one, you don't have to worry about the other one. So I really like that. Um, interface is uh, the regular printer USB port and, um, and a mini SD card, as I said before, you get uh, with the machine. This spool holder is metal and nice and sturdy. I don't use the spool holders that come with my machines. So the reason why is I don't put any extra stress on my gantry than I need to. I think it's gonna increase wobbling, increase vibration. I don't do it. Um, all of my spool holders are either wall mounted or sit next to the machines. So they're normally wall mounted and above if I'm using direct drive. If it's a Bowden, I normally have um, something set up by the side, which is what I have for this. So I'm doing that. Um, touch screen, touch screen's really nice, super, super easy to navigate. Um, for, so as I said before, the elephant in the room is obviously that this is very similar in design to the Ender 3 V2, the new one. Um, what I would say is that this has a touch screen. The Ender 3 has a large color screen, but you actually still use a click wheel. Um, the build surface is still removable. Um, the part cooling, in my opinion, is better on this than it is on the V2. And what's going to matter the most to, to a lot of people is the price point. So the LK4 Pro on Amazon right now is £219.99, which is a genuinely respectable price for the machine that you are getting. Um, I feel like they've purposefully priced it to compete with the Ender 3 V2 because the Ender 3 V2 is $274.99. Still a respectable price for a respectable machine, but if you can get a machine that performs as well or better for cheaper, it's, it's kind of a no-brainer. So I'll quickly show you some of the um, prints that I have done so far.
So the first print I did, I just did with, a, with my Sidewinder profile. All I did was I upped the retraction, because it's a Bowden, not a, uh, not a direct drive, and I changed the bed size. And this is what we're looking at for a calibration cube, which I'm going to be honest, for a profile I have not tuned, that is very nice. Nice and clean on all sides. Really good. So then we did the obligatory benchy. So the benchy here, you can see that that is nice and clean. A few zits here where we need to tweak our attraction a little bit, but nice and clean. I don't know if you can see that, like the, the uh, Chimney is really nice. The overhangs are really nice. A really nice print. Um, then I went for something a little larger. So at the moment I'm doing a, uh, an alien model and this is the hand for it. So this was near enough the full volume of the, of the machine. So you can see This is as it came off. Really, really nice. Very happy with that. I feel like you can tell a lot about a printer company about whether or not they lie about their machines. So some companies do. Um, some companies will tell you that you've got a build plate of a certain size, but you can't actually use the full volume of that. Um, Let's go and sit back down. Um, so this one says that it is 220 by 220 by 250. Um, you can actually print a little bit outside of that. So this print here is actually 252. And I had a raft on the bottom of that as well, which was a couple of mils. So I was probably about 255 when this was, uh, when this was done. Uh, and it all printed, nothing, nothing crashed, nothing collided, nothing like that. Um, I have got a video of the calibration cube printing as well, so I'll put a little time lapse of that on at the end. Um, genuinely, I, I am really impressed with the machine. I'm very impressed with the quality, um, and I, you know, I, I, I'm very impressed with the way that it's, you know, with the, with, with the way that it's um, that it's performed. It's it's been easy to use, easy to pick up, easy to configure, and the results speak for themselves. It's producing very good quality prints. These are all done at a 0.2 layer height. So we're not doing anything, you know, crazy low layer heights to produce these results. Um, they are, it's just a really solid printer. Um, there's no flex in any of the, uh, there's no flex in any of the um, axes or anything. I'm not a huge fan of single Z machines, but saying that this doesn't really have any problems with it. I mean, this is static now and you know, that's, that's not moving. Um, I would recommend this over the Ender 2, Ender 3 V2. Um, it's cheaper. It's got a touch screen. Most of the rest of the specs are pretty similar. The park calling is good. Um, all the cable management is good. The installation is easy. It's a great machine. Um, this is quickly turning into one of my favorite machines to print with. And it is definitely turning into, or has turned into, a click and forget machine. A machine where you just put a print on and off you go. You don't have to watch the first layer go down. You can just bosh, off you go, done. Um, so yeah, so I'm really, I, I, I'm really happy with it. Um, look and feel, feels pretty premium. I like the fact that they've done the, um, the flat caps over the uh, extrusions. I think that's quite, uh, quite sleek. Uh, you can mount your screen either side. So depending on how your workshop or work area is um, set up, you can, uh, you can sort of flip those, those around. Um, yeah, great machine. Genuinely really impressed with it. So um, that's... That's it, that's final thoughts really. It's great machine, a great price, um, and, and I genuinely recommend it. Um, my Sidewinder is probably still my favorite machine, but to be clear, this probably prints a little nicer than my Sidewinder, actually. Um, 
it's just the build volume. So because of the size of the models that I do and the types of models that I do, um, there's parts that I can do on this, but not everything. So I can load up the build plate and print a bunch of stuff, but I can only really print a bunch of small stuff. Um, the Sidewinder being 300 by 300 um, just gives me a lot more versatility than, than, than a printer of this size. But most models are sliced to, um, to, to fit you know, um, to fit an ender size machine because it's so popular. So I don't really suppose it's much of an issue for anybody. If anybody was starting out in 3D printing, this is a great machine to get. Um, I say the touch screen's nice and easy to use. It's super easy to put together. Um, everything's tucked out of the way and all the wires, um, you know, you can't, can't do anything wrong. Everything's labeled. Really, really good. Genuinely impressed. So uh, join us soon. We've got some uh, more reviews coming. So uh, we will be reviewing a Prusa i3 clone. Um, this isn't like a, a, an Anycubic clone or something like that, where they've just taken the i3 and they've sort of modified it. This is a direct clone of a, of a Prusa from, um, from AliExpress. We have a Jenny printer coming. So um, a Jenny printer 4, the Z370, I think it is. It's an Ultimaker clone. Um, and it, I mean, it looks exactly like an Ultimaker. Ultimaker, the new Ultimaker 3 is like, I think it's about three and a half thousand pound or something like that. This was 850 quid. Um, I, I, it comes as a DIY kit. And, I, and when I say DIY kit, I mean DIY kit. Um, let's just turn this off because the fans a little loud for my liking um so when i say diy kit i mean it comes with panels and cables and a board and you have to build it assemble it and, and, and do the lot um so that's going to be a really interesting one um so i'm going to do a live stream of us building the jenny printer because there's no real instructions on how to build it um so that could be quite interesting and long um, and obviously we'll be doing a review of the Jenny printer once it's, once it's up and running as well. Um, our sponsors, 3D Filer Print, uh, we are also going to be doing a review for them on the new Flash Forge Creator 3, their new IDEX machine, the independent extruder machine. Um, really quite excited about that. The Flash Forges are um, fast becoming a very desirable, easy machine to use. So I'm very interested to see how the IDEX works. Um, very keen to try their, their mirror printing as well that they offer. Um, so yeah, so stay tuned with us for all of that. Stay healthy guys, see you later.